This video is sponsored by Altium. In this video, we will use augmented data set to train the UNet architecture. The complete code can be found in the Jupyter Notebook. Let's make a few adjustments now. Then we'll start with the training. First, we will change the data set path. Our path will be data set slash aug. Let's look at the folder structure. Inside the data set, we have augmented data inside the aug folder. And inside the aug and the train, we can see the number of training samples will increase. We have 300 images and 300 masks. We will use this data set. We need to make the next change to the files dir. Our model file and the log file will be saved inside the files with the new folder name, aug. If we look at the previous code, we have the files folder. And inside it, we have the non-aug folder. If we go inside the aug, we realize that we don't have any files. So let's delete this folder. It's already blank, but still, we removed it. There are two changes we need to make now. Let's begin with the training and execute all the cells. Now, let's go back to the start. We need to see if there's an error, so we will check it. As we see, the number of training samples is increased when we load the data. This time, we have 300 images and 300 masks. However, for validation, it remains the same. We have 20 images and 20 masks for the validation set. We increase the number of samples while training because the model learns with those samples. The validation is just a check, so we increase the training sample, not the validation. This video is sponsored by Altium, the industry standard and most professional PCB design software on the market. I've used Altium for designing printed circuit boards to build my own custom Arduinos and high-speed on-edge computer vision projects. When I tested other PCB CAD softwares out there, I found that nothing came close to the flexibility, ease of use, and power of Altium Designer. I mean, if you ever worked on PCB design for computer vision applications, you know that transmitting video signals is a very delicate task with many high-speed signals that you have to consider in terms of electromagnetic noise and crosstalk. Altium helps you to easily manage and route high-speed signals with length tuning to ensure that you receive clear image quality on the other end. What's really great is that we have partnered up with Altium to bring you an exclusive discount for our Augmented Startups community. Sign up with the link down below to get 30% off monthly of the perpetual license of Altium Designer. You can also try out Altium Designer for free for the first 15 days. Just click the link down below to get started. Now, as we see, the number of batches has also increased. Here we have loaded our UNet architecture, which shows all the layers, shapes, etc. Now we can see the training starting, and the first epoch is finished in 43 seconds. The time increased substantially. As I recall correctly, in the first file, it took 22 seconds, but this time it took 43. It's nearly double the time, and the reason for that is the samples have increased. The training will take more time than the previous because of the sample size. The second epoch took 28 seconds. It will take longer if you compare it with the original data set. But on the other hand, the improvement is much better. The previous code took nearly 6 to 7 epochs to improve, but here we already have an improvement in the second epoch. Let's wait for the third epoch to complete as well. As we see, with some drastic changes there, it went from 0.66 to 0.53. The time increases with augmented data, but the performance also drastically increases. The drawback is that the time increase, but the advantage is that it will improve the performance. These things balance out each other. Now let's see the result of this epoch. This time there is no improvement, so let's leave this model for training and we'll see when the training is completed. Our training is now complete, and we can see the training stopped at the 46th epoch. The last update was on the 26th epoch, where our training loss is 0.18 training accuracy, is 94% validation loss, is 24% validation accuracy, is 92%. Now we have our weight file for the augmented data set. Here we have our weight file and CSV file. Well, let's take a look at the CSV file. Here we can see the loss and how it changes, and the rest of the metrics, which are accuracy, loss, validation accuracy, and validation loss. We will compare the performance of UNet trained on the original and augmented data set. Here we have the table containing the following headers, data set, number of epochs, training loss, training accuracy, validation loss, and validation accuracy. From this table, we can see that UNet, which is trained on the original data set, took 49 epochs, while the UNet, which is trained with an augmented data set, took 46 epochs only. Now, when we compare the training loads and training accuracy of both the original and augmented data set, we can observe that the original data set has better loss and training accuracy when compared with the augmented data set. So, looking at this, it seems that the model trained on the original data set has learned better features. If you compare the validation loss and accuracy, this fact seems wrong. The augmented data set has achieved better validation loss and better validation accuracy. 
So from this table, we can conclude that augmentation helps improve the model's performance. And while training, we should always prefer to look at the validation score instead of the training scores.